<clears throat> Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back. I'm doing another franchise revisit here. I'm unlike the Fright Night and Scream ones where I put all the videos up within one week, which I think was a little bit overboard for those. This one I'm going to be running a little bit closer to what I did for Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street where I'll put up one every week or two as I try to not just revisit these Phantasm films, all five of them, but um, wrap my head around them because there are a lot of aspects of these films that have never made sense to me. Um, so if you haven't seen them, you know, I would at least suggest checking out the first one. Um, if you want to bite the bullet and buy physical media, they have a set where you get all five of them for anywhere from $25 to $45. They're also available on Shudder, all except for part two, which you don't have the rights to, I guess. <clears throat> but go ahead and watch the first movie. Tell me, you know, think about, you know, what you get from it and come back and see if any of the weird questions or ideas that I have, you actually have an answer to. So um, basically with the first one, I'd only seen it once back in the 80s. It was difficult to track down back then. <clears throat> and, um, you know, my local video stores were all getting bought up by Blockbuster, who for some reason the locations around me just weren't even carrying it. But, um, so the one I was most familiar with growing up was part two, because it was kind of on high rotation on cable. <clears throat> so a quick little, well, not even quick, but like a full synopsis of this before we dive into like the real spoiler ridden kind of stuff is that this is what the movie's supposed to be about. <clears throat> The residents of a small town have begun dying under strange circumstances leading young Mike to investigate. After discovering that the tall man, the town's mortician, is killing and reanimating the dead as misshapen zombies, Mike se seeks help from his older brother Jody and local ice cream man Reggie. Working together, they try to lure out and kill the tall man, all while avoiding his minions and a deadly silver sphere. So even with it all laid out like that, it sounds kind of confusing as to exactly what's going on but um we yeah, have seen this one a few times and this last time i decided i'm going to take some notes try to make sense of everything and sure enough by the end there were still things that i didn't understand so i kind of get the overall feel of what's happening here you know we get um people are dying in this town um the mortuary is run by this tall man and he seems to be stealing these bodies putting them into these little barrels to compress them and send them into another dimension where they are turned into these little evil Jawa looking things. So the kid Mike sees that something's going on and him and his friends basically try to stop it. But here's what's kind of confusing is that, um, is that we get, um, we get this very strange feel with these movies in general. You know, I noticed this time watching it that um, you know, there's not a lot of other characters. I know some of that's probably because budget is a very small production. But everything seems like these towns are almost half empty. They're kind of like a dreamlike state and everything. Some of it just doesn't make any sense. Little things like when Mike goes to the fortune teller and they have that little box that he puts in his he puts his hand in and it's like almost like a scene out of Dune or something. And the box disappears and Mike just doesn't even react that much to this box completely vanishing in front of him. When he does sneak in uh, to the mortuary, sees these terrible things, sees a person killed, comes back with a chopped off finger, I think it was from the tall man, which then turns into this other creature. When he is explaining all this to his brother Jody and Jody sees it, Jody accepts it very quickly and doesn't even seem all that surprised. You know, he doesn't seem quite as freaked out as I would think somebody would be when they see some weird apparent interdimensional creature. And then with Reggie, that's another one, you know, he's just this very laid back guy, he likes to play guitar, sell ice cream, there's not much going on there. But um, when everything starts going down, Reggie just jumps right in, he's ready to fight, ride or die, there's no big issue there. So their lack of reactions and this world having this weird kind of feel to it was hard for me to wrap my head around, but I think I got the gist of the story. You know, they, they found out what was happening there, they're gonna go and take out the tall man. They go there and they take him out. Everything's cool, except when we get to this ending. So Reggie gets stabbed. And so he's stabbed by the blonde woman that we've seen throughout this film. He apparently dies. But as he's dying, we see this tall, this woman changing into the tall man, like back and forth and ending as being the tall man. So I don't know if that means that the tall man was actually in disguise as a blonde woman, if he was just projecting the blonde woman and she's some sort of ghost or hallucination or what the deal is. But although the stuff with the blonde woman is already pretty confusing, then it gets even more confusing to where Mike is telling this story to Reggie and Reggie just says that basically everything that we saw as the audience members was just a dream that Mike was having. 
a nightmare to cope with the loss of Jody, who had died in a car accident. So to deal with all this, they're like, well, let's just, you know, get our minds off of all these terrible things that happened with, you know, your brother being dead and let's go on a road trip. So Mike goes upstairs and uh, to start packing for this. And then the tall man shows up and breaks through the uh, breaks through the mirror. So does that mean that everything that Mike said was true? And if so, how is it that Reggie is still alive? And then why would Reggie be lying about it? Did all these things that happened in a dream happen technically in some other dimension and Reggie wasn't a part of that? And the situation with what happened with Jody isn't part of this? Like, what, what does that ending actually mean? And what are your thoughts on that ending if you've seen it? Just little things like how dreamy it is, how weird the music is, the box disappearing, um, Jody just, you know, jumping right into accepting everything so easily, as did Reggie. Reggie dies yet. It was a blonde woman who killed him that might have been a tall man. And then they wake up and it's all explained away as a dream and they're going to go on a road trip, but the tall man is still there. So does that just mean that what's happening now with Mike waking up, being told by Reggie that it's all a dream, was that whole scene itself just a dream? I love the movie, but that ending doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm wondering, what do you think of that ending? How do you interpret it? And was this something that you thought of um, from watching the movies or did you see like interviews with the writer director or did you read other articles or people tried to break it down? Sound off in the comments. And while you're sounding off in the comments, also be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell because I'm going to do one for part two because part two, I also have some weird questions about. But anyways, like I said, I really do like these movies, but the ending of Phantasm makes no sense as do some of the other beats within it. So... Like I said, sound off. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I will see you in the next one.